Hello there. Welcome to yet another wonderful time with me, Bishop Mike Lodge, on Daily Word and Prayer. What a day to be alive under the covering and the blessings of the Almighty God. I bless you today and decree over your life that you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. I decree over your life that you shall bring forth fruit in your seasons and every season of life. I also speak over you and decree that your leaves shall not wither and that everything you lay your hands upon to do, God, even the Lord God Almighty, will cause them to prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, every day for you will be a plus and not a minus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I welcome you yet to another time where we look into God's word and we do some declarations of affirmations. The word of God is quick, see it scripture. And it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And if that be true to the word of God, that be also true to your words. For you were created after the pattern of the Godhead. After the pattern of the Almighty himself. After his image and likeness. Scripture says, He that made the eye, will he not see? He that made the ear, will he not hear? And above all, he that made the mouth, will he not be able to speak? So that God speaks, he makes us also to be able to speak. That we might take charge over our world and create the kind of world that we desire to have upon the face of the earth. We've been talking about mindmatics, creative consciousness, and we've been looking very deeply into the power of the spoken word, the power of words. I made us to realize that words are spirits. And once spoken, they are released and begin to create for us our realities. They walk from the realm of the unseen and make things happen in the scene. Like I said, you don't know how light is transmitted from the point of the place where you press the on button to the place where the bulb is. Yet you see light comes. The mechanism behind it, you know nothing about. But once you do your part, the system that has been put in place goes on to do its own part. That's how powerful words are. You don't know the mechanism behind the power of creativity. But once you speak it, the power of words that are creative go into action and begin to bring into manifestations everything that you declare. Words are God's. For in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So words are God's and they are God's over our lives. The words you speak becomes the God that envelops your life and determines what your life becomes. The almighty God will not change what your mouth have uttered. Mm -mm. For he says, as you have spoken to my ears, that will I do for you. So words are instruments of creation. Words are the programmers of our destinies. And never forget, words command results. So the big question will always be, what kind of word proceeds from your mouth? Are they positive words that add to your life or negative words 
that subtracts from your life? Are they positive words and words of affirmations in line with the word of God that establishes you, prospers you, and settles you? Or they are the words that destroys and words that reduce you to nothing? I pray that as you hear the sound of my voice, you will make your words good so that your life and your world can become good as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Today I want to dive in some more and show you another dimension of the power of words. How that with your words, you can be justified and with your words also, mm, you can be condemned. I'll say it again. With your words, you can be justified. And with your words, you can be condemned. Look at what scripture says in the book of Matthew's gospel, chapter number 12, reading verse number 37. Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 37. By thy word, thy word, thou shalt be justified, and by thy word, thou shalt be condemned. So the choice is yours, as well as mine. If I don't want condemnation in life, I must know the kind of words I use. If I want to be justified in life, I must be careful with the kind of words that I use. So every man determines his condemnation and his justification. That's why the preacher man in Proverbs says, life and death, which means condemnation, and justification are in the power of the tongue. And every man shall eat the fruit of the one that he loves. Many of us sentence ourselves by our words. Many of us destroy our lives, our marriages, our businesses, our fortunes, our children by our words. And once you have spoken, the law of the Godhead declares you have determined your own destiny and God wouldn't change it. For he has made you to be God upon the face of the earth. What you say is what you get. I pray that you come to understanding this truth. For many of these things will not be taught us in church. But I make bold to declare that it is your word that determines your world and your life expectations. More so, your life realities. I said to us yesterday that it doesn't matter what we're going through. If we see conditions around us that are bad. We can change it by our words and turn them to become good. Just like the almighty God, after he made earth and the heavens in Genesis chapter number one, verse one. The Bible says in verse two, the earth was without form. It was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Lord did not leave the earth the way he saw it after the attack of the wicked over the earth. No. He spoke into being what he wanted. And the earth ultimately reformed and retook upon itself all that the Lord spoke into being. Your earth, your life, your world will change by your words. And I pray that as you give me your ears, God will teach you something through these words that will make your life become better than it has ever been before. In Jesus' mighty name. In looking at the scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter number 43. Reading verse 25 
and 26. This is heavy. Scripture records that the Lord said, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. In verse 26 it says, Put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou. Speak. Speak. That thou mayest be justified. Declare. Declare with your mouth. That thou mayest be justified. Again, this passage of scripture even God himself is saying to us, it's your declaration, your speakings that will determine your justifications. Mm. You might have seen. You might have done what is wrong. But by virtue of your words, your words, you can be justified. That's what the law court is all about. When even people do wrong and they are taken to the court, they are given the opportunity to plead their case, to present their strong reasons why they must be justified, that is, acquitted, why they must be favored, why sentence and punishment must not be given to them. It takes a people who know how to plead their case that gets justification. Those who don't plead their case and plead it well become condemned. Oh my goodness. The Lord says, put me in remembrance. Say something to me. Say something to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Use my words to talk to me. Plead with me and speak and thou, thou shall be justified. What does it mean to be justified? The Lord says you shall be made to become right. You shall be acquitted of all offense. You shall be favored, my God. You shall be supported and you shall be established. So which means for you to be established favored, supported and be acquitted you need to open your mouth to speak I pray that from today your mouth will declare your justifications in Jesus mighty name now look at what scripture also says in Isaiah that same book in chapter 54 verse number 17 Look at what scripture says. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall be lifted up, that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of the Lord of me, saith the Lord God which means <laughs> every one tongue every one sentence against you you can condemn them you can say no to them you can bring them to doom to damnation to an unfavorable state in your life and say no I will not go through any punishment I will not go through any pain any ache, any trouble it is your mouth that will condemn every affliction of a wicked tongue against your life. He says it, thou shalt condemn. It's not another person that will condemn it. It is you that will condemn. You will condemn every judgment that the enemy has passed over your life. I don't know who has risen up against you. Whether in the covens of the witches or the wizards, whether in the places of the occultists, whether in the places 
of the law courts of men? Who is it that has risen up and brought you to judgment by their words? The Lord says to say to you, you by your own words can turn it around, condemn that which they have said, and justify yourself. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. So which means, if you don't know how to use words, you don't know how to use your heritage. For it has been given to you. A heritage is an inheritance. What the Lord has given to his own. Based on the fact that they are children of his. A man who has lived long and walked and gathered a lot of material wealth writes a will which becomes an inheritance for his children. What he wants each of them to get per time when he is gone. For it is said that it is the death of the testator that establishes the release of the testament. Which is the giving of the inheritance comes by the death of he who had acquired the inheritance the goods and the properties in the first place and they are given to his children to those whom he has willed them to and i want to say to you here by the word of truth what has been willed to you by god is the power of words my god what has been willed to you by god is the power of words how you can use words to justify yourself or you can use words to condemn yourself. You can use words to condemn every negative thing spoken against you and justify yourself at the end of the day. My God. Let's look at a few examples in scriptures. In scriptures, in the book of Genesis chapter number 4, we read the story of Cain. Please just follow closely as I run through this passage of scripture. Verse 8 in chapter 4 of Genesis says, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened up her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, Cain opened his mouth, Cain reasoned with the Lord, presented the strong reasons, and said, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. Look at what the Lord did. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any man finding him should kill him. Wow! What a word! How come Cain turned the tide around in his favor? The sentence was against him for death, for being a fugitive, and for him also to become a vagabond. But you see, when the word was spoken to Cain by the Lord, the Bible says, he understanding the power of I amness, he understanding the power of words. That by his words he could be justified before his God and not be condemned. You know what he said? He said, my punishment is greater than I can bear. What he was saying is, oh Lord, I can't take it. It's too much for me to handle. Oh Lord, turn it around. Turn it around. And the Bible says the Lord turned it around. And the beginning of the turning it around came when the Lord put a mark upon him that nobody should be able to slay him. Number two, if you read and understand what a fugitive is, 
what a vagabond or who a fugitive and a vagabond is, you will realize that a fugitive is a person who is fleeing, running from prosecution, running from the law because he had murdered somebody. He has killed somebody. So he should be killed. But you see the mystery here. When Cain said, my punishment is too great for me to bear. The Lord put a mark upon him and said, you will no longer be killed. Whoever kills you, I will destroy that person sevenfold. <laughs> Cain was justified by his words. He was no longer a fugitive. He was no longer a fugitive. No longer was he killed because he had killed his brother? The second thing, there is the word vagabond. Who is a vagabond? A vagabond is a person who is a wanderer. A person who moves from place to place. A destitute. A person that has no settled place to call his abode. How do we also know that the Lord turned this around for Cain? Because the Bible says Cain built a city, married a wife, gave birth to a son, and called the name of the city after the name of his son. A vagabond would not have been able to do that. Yes, it was God that placed the curse upon him. It is said that when man curses man, man can run to God for help. But when God curses a man, who should the man run to? He can't go anywhere. He bears the brunt of the curse. But can I tell you this? When a man understands the mystery and the power to words, then he can come to God and plead his case. Present his strong reasons. Why? He, God, should justify him. Why the man should be justified. And look at Cain. Because Cain said it's too much for him to bear. He was justified. He was no longer a fugitive and he was no longer a vagabond. All because he spoke with his mouth. The big question this day is, what are you saying with your mouth? It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter who has placed a, 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 a word of judgment, a curse over your life. The scripture says you can condemn it. You can say no to it with your words. Your cries will not change it. Your feeling sorry for yourself will not change it. Your attitude of weakness and of, of despondency will not change it. It's words that changes circumstances and situations. I beg of you, begin to open your mouth and speak what you want so that you will be justified in life. The other person I want to show you whose case also comes up in the scripture is King Hezekiah. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 38, reading from verse number 1 through to 4, it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order. For thou shalt die and not leave. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked with thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, The God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have heard thy words, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years more yes what a word Ezekiah justified himself and broke the bonds of death by his words 
when he called upon God to remember. To remember. And it was God that said to us, like I read, even in scriptures, in the book of Isaiah 43, it says, put me in remembrance. Verse number 26. Put me in remembrance. Ezekiah said, oh Lord, remember. Remember how I have walked with you with a perfect heart. Remember what I have done for you and for thine house and the kingdom. I don't want to die now. And by it, before Isaiah, the major prophet, whose words never return unto him void, who speaks a prophetic word and it comes to pass. For this time, that word did not come to pass. Before he could leave the palace of the king, the Lord went back to Isaiah, the prophet, and said, Go back. To Hezekiah. I know you have said to him by my word that he should put his house in order that he will die. But something has transpired. Hezekiah the king understands the heritage, the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And he has used this heritage. I have added 15 more years to him. And Isaiah turned and declared it over King Hezekiah. And King Hezekiah lived, instead of dying, 15 more years. My God, who is it, what is it that has come to program you for death? And I said, you will not live but die. I decree today, that thing falls before you and becomes a thing of naught in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I beg of you in the name of God. You must realize that the heritage of the saints is the power of words. The power of words. How to use your words to justify yourself. Not to condemn yourself. Don't join the enemy to condemn yourself. Even if the Lord has said something that you really find you don't want. Just like Cain saw and Ezekiah saw. They stood to refuse it by pleading their case. Presenting their strong reasons. By declaring with their mouth that they didn't want it. And God turned it around. I say this to you. The Lord also will turn it in your favor. In Jesus mighty name. Do you remember the case wherein God had concluded in destroying all of the Israelites, even in the wilderness? He said that Moses should let him destroy the whole of the Israelites. That was what God wanted to do. But Moses played, pleaded his cause, presented his strong reason, he declared, and was justified of the Lord. You too can be justified, and will be justified, if you know how to use words, to come before God, over any and every situation of life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, this one that I'm to share with you now is so heavy. It's so heavy. And this one was what turned my life around. Beyond the first two examples I had given to you. This third example is found in the book of Mark's gospel, chapter number five. Reading from verse number one. It says, And they came over onto the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the sheep, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not even with chains, because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains and the fetters had been plucked asunder by him, and broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of David, son of the Most High? I adjure thee by God. I beg you by God, I ask you by God that thou torment me not. 
And he said unto them, uh, said unto, for he had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him that he would not send them away into the country, out of the country, out of the country. He besought him much that he will not send them away out of the country. My God. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swines feeding, of swine feeding. And all the devils in the man besought Jesus saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them and fought with, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And there were about 2,000 and we are choked in the sea. My God, my God, my God. Do you know what this tells me? That words are so powerful. That we must not take them for granted. This man that had the legion in him. Legion in him. A company of about 12,000 is what you call a legion or thereabout. 6 to 12,000. 6 to 12,000 is what you call a legion. Now which means there are about 6 to 12,000 demons. Devils. In one man. What a state to have been in. He was completely occupied by devils. And when Jesus told them to come out. The Bible says the first thing they did was to beseech him. To beg him. Number one, not to torment them. And Jesus did not torment them. Why? They spoke. Oh Lord, I like to call it understanding the rules of engagement in the realms of the spirit. Understanding the rules of engagement in the realms of the spirit. They spoke. Jesus did not torment them. And they besought him. They begged him. Devils, devils, said to Jesus, we don't want to go out of this country. We want to remain in this country. They saw a herd of swine, of pigs, feeding. And they said to Jesus, that's where we want to go to. They even told Jesus where they wanted to go to. Devils. Devils. And Jesus said, go. Jesus justified them. He said, go, go. He favored them to enter into swine. He did not cast them out of the country, which he originally wanted to do. If they had not spoken, they would have been out of the country. But because they spoke, they did not go out of the country. Jesus did not cast them out of the country. Rather, he said that they should enter into the swines. Why? They spoke. They spoke. If Jesus will grant the words of devils, and allow them go where they said they wanted to go to. Allow them not to be tormented because they said, don't torment us. What about you and I? So a sealed lip is a sealed destiny. A closed mouth is a closed and a short life. Open that mouth wide and keep on speaking. For you are a speaking spirit. The reality of your life and your experiences are tied to the words that come out of your mouth. I said to us yesterday that scripture says in the book of Proverbs, a man's belly shall be satisfied, shall be filled with the words of his lips. I beg of you, don't die small. 
Don't die in this condition in which you find yourself. There are places you need to go to. There are things you need to achieve. Open your mouth and begin to tell what you want to achieve, where you want to go to, and what you want to become in life. As your mouth declares it, so your life will experience it. It is you that determines what becomes of your external realities. First, by understanding what you want and where you want to go to in your mind and allowing your mouth to confess it. For as a man thinketh, the mouth speaketh. For with the heart, which is the mind, man believeth. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I wrap this up by telling us the story of one man who did not understand the rule of engagement in the realm of the spirit. The power of words. He didn't understand it. He didn't understand the heritage of the saints, which was the which is the heritage of words. And that man was a priest of the Lord called Eli, the, the father of Hophni and Phinehas. Scripture says that when Samuel had been with him for a while, Eli's eyes became so dim he couldn't hear the Lord anymore. A prophet had been sent to say that the Lord was going to take away even the priesthood away from his tribe and from his family. And more so when the Lord visited Samuel, the small young boy in his hands, and gave him great revelations of how terrible things were going to happen. How that his two sons were going to die in one day. How that also the priesthood would be taken away from his family. You know what Eli said? He is the Lord. Let him do what pleases him. Mm. In 1 Samuel chapter number 3, verse number 18, Samuel saw, or be Eli rather, Eli made this very negative statement. It is the Lord. Let him do what seemed good unto him. Yes, it seemed good unto the Lord to take away the priesthood from his house because of the sins of his sons. But did it seem good to him, Eli? Was it a good thing? So he would have contested it. He would have pleaded his cause and his case. He would have declared so that the Lord would have justified him, would have favored him, would have acquitted him from the sentence of damnation. But he said, it's the Lord. Let him do that which pleased him. And that was how Eli's two sons died. That was why Eli also died. And that was why the priesthood was taken away from his household. Makuse palata gratis. I beg you in the name of the Lord, be careful what you say with your words. Be careful what kind of words come out of your mouth. I pray that you understand the rule of spiritual engagement which is established by words and your inheritance in him, your heritage, which is the word of grace. Let your words always be seasoned with grace. That is what scripture says. Let your word be that which will favor you at all times and your story will drastically, dramatically change for the better in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you today and I decree you're blessed. By reason of these words, always speak over your life. Always speak over your circumstances. Always speak over your situation. What you want to experience and what you want to have. Don't accept the things the way they are. Especially if they are negative and they do not seem good to you. Reject them. Refuse them. Plead your cause. Bring God to remembrance. Declare with your mouth that you might be justified. By that I mean that you might be favored, supported, established, and be positioned in life for good in Jesus' name. I bless you this day and I decree you are blessed. The word of the Lord will not return unto him void. So your words also will not return unto you void. As you declare it, they will find expressions upon the face of the earth. And God, even the God of heaven, will seal it and bring them to pass. In Jesus' mighty name. Never ever use your words against 
yourself. You know why? You are not the enemy. It's the devil and the wicked ones out there, even the agents of the devil, that are your enemies. So don't say anything that will destroy your today or your tomorrow. The Lord bless you and honor you and keep you and do for you exactly what your mouth declares. For he says, as you have spoken in my ear, so will I do unto you. God bless you. Say these words of affirmations with me. I receive grace to manifest like never before. I have grace to manifest and create a new world for myself. The heritage of words are my inheritances. And from today, I declare life begins to respond to me positively. All things will go well for me. All things will go well in me and I'll be blessed of the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue lifted up against me in judgment, I condemn. From the realm of the spirit to the physical, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for staying tuned and I know that God has blessed you. Please do me a favor, press the like button, share with your friends and your families. And do go also with me to my YouTube channel, Bishop Mike Laju TV. Subscribe and God will bless you because there we post all our videos and you'll get some more teachings that will move you to a better tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name. Till I come your way same time tomorrow, which is 12 noon on the dot. Never forget, every day for you will be a plus and not a minus in Jesus' mighty name. Stay rapturable in Jesus' name. Amen.